G'day fellow Black Pillars and Inkwells, it's Master Yoda here, hope you guys are all doing well. The title of today's video is a reaction video, it's a reaction to a female dating coach uh, slash PUA. Um, oh, Doug the Thugfist, if you're watching this, uh, this is not the video that you asked me to do a reaction to, that's the one where Torsh is doing an argument, having a, sorry, having a, not an argument, having a debate with uh, Gangstar on uh on looks versus game. I'm going to do that one later because that one's going to take me a really long time. That's that's probably going to be three hours plus, plus potentially four hours. So I will do that one later, Doug. But th but thank you for that suggestion, and I I will attend to that later. This is another this is another video I found on Torsha's channel. She's doing a reaction to uh, a female PUA slash dating coach. All the same things, all the same shit. Called Marnie Wingirl. So what I'll do is I'll let the video run and and stop it and, and give my commentary so without further ado let's get into it i hate female dating coaches actually i had all dating coaches and puas regardless whether they're male or female for the simple fact that they're frauds uh, you can't teach attraction women make snap judgments on men based on what they see um the, the pua scammers and dating brooches they would like you to believe if you can somehow press the right emotional buttons on a woman that that will get her to overlook your physical shortcomings and get her to sleep with you. Uh, no, it doesn't work. If, uh, if you don't meet that woman's uh, minimum looks threshold, there'll be no chance of intimacy. Not because I don't think they give good advice, but I think they give lukewarm it. It's like when you Google, how do I respond to Bram? Just accept the fact she has this. No, bitch, we're going in. She has a boyfriend. I'm going to help you with what to say. It's Marnie. I think she's got great energy. So we're going to see what she has to say. If there's one thing that I'm really good at, it's game. I don't know if it's my bar experience, probably, but. I believe the young lady here in the video used to be a barmaid that worked in, I imagine, lots of nightclubs, maybe pubs, whatever. So, yeah, she's uh, a lot of industry in the uh, hospitality industry. These are the emails that I get the most. It's like, how do I do this? How do I do that? We won't go into it, but I don't want to say, I don't want to say like most people are autistic. I know I do have some people in the- Most people are autistic. That's a bit of a bit of an arrogant, rude thing to say. No, um... I'm definitely not autistic. I know how to read social cues and body language. I think most normal guys can. You don't need to uh, pay a PUA scammer or dating roach on, on how to interact with people. I think you, you learn that skill simply just by interacting with other people. Audience who are on the spectrum, and I totally get it when it comes to needing to know how to position yourself, where to put your hands, how to say it, what comes off bad or whatever. So when I give advice, I really like to break all of that down if I can. As the rehab room form, the, the former Inkwell TV once said, if you've got to go to a PUA or a dating coach, it's a wrap. It's over. I mean, do you think Chad and Tyrone have to go to a, a PUA scammer or dating coach to learn how to interact with women? Look, I mean... If you don't know how to interact with with other people, you know, I, I would suggest you've got more serious problems than not being able to attract women. I mean, look, you learn how to interact with people simply just by interacting with them. You know, you, you, so you practice that by just interacting with people. And, you know, and things like social intelligence, um, you, you learn it's a self-taught skill anyway. You don't need to pay a a PUA or a dating coach on on, on something to, to teach you to do something that you should already know. It's ridiculous. I mean, what, what are we going to have next? Are we going to have coaches who are going to teach you how to wipe your bum after you've taken a shit? I mean, this is just ridiculous. And because it's like almost borderline sexual harassment if you even approach a bitch. So I'm going to see. Well, well, it is. I mean, um, if you don't approach a woman without her giving you the green light to do so, yeah, she will take that as sexual harassment. And uh, as we all know, women get very offended when an unattractive man approaches them. They take great offence to it. They, they get really offended. Um, the PUA uh, scammers and dating roaches would, would, like, would like to tell you, oh, no, women like being approached. No, they don't like being approached. Or they do, but by Chad. 
not by average or below average looking guys. But she says, I'm going to give my advice as a former bartender and what to say. I came up with a few things that f would play fall under amused mastery. So without further ado, share this video, like it, comment, subscribe, super chat your bitch. Here we go. So what if you ask a woman out and she says, sorry, I have a boyfriend or sorry, I just don't see you that way or basically gives you some sort of response, something else. Well, if a woman says she's got a boyfriend or she's, or she says she doesn't see it that way, she's just rejected you. I mean, it's pretty straightforward. How would you respond back to that? I see most men that... I swear to God. No, okay. I don't even want you to ask if she has a boyfriend. You're setting yourself up for failure. Like, are you single? Listen, if your bitch is in a club and they're dating, she's looking okay i don't care what she says <laughs> but like don't even ask first off if you can avoid it do it but we'll keep going we talk to are crippled by the fear of rejection and have no clue how to deal with it that's why in no i wouldn't i wouldn't say that i mean i've put up with a lot of rejection i mean probably not a lot compared to other guys as i've said in previous videos over my lifetime um, I've probably been rejected about 220, 230 times. A hundred of those rejections were in person, like when I was actually dealing with a woman in person. The remaining 120, 130 were online ones. Um, yeah, rejection's not fun, and I do take it personally. Look, all, we all do. A anyone who says they don't take rejection personally is lying or coping. We all do, believe me. But with that said, you know, when a woman rejected me, I didn't get angry or scream or yell or do anything crazy like that. No, I just politely thanked her for a time and just, you know, uh, and let's just lift her alone. Um, rejection's not fun and it, and it ruins your day or night if you if you happen to be meeting a woman at night. Um, um, look, most guys take rejection okay. I mean, I do. I mean, it, it sucks. It's, it, it it destroys your self-confidence, but um, it is what it is. I mean, um, you know, uh, but... But when you get rejected so many times, you just um, it, you, you, your self confidence is absolutely it's 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 shut up into a million pieces. It's blown up into a million pieces. I mean, I'll, I'll be honest. When it comes to women, um, I have no confidence at all. I mean, I have sexual confidence, obviously due to the fact that you know I've, I've been with many hookers, um, so I had to pay for that. I had to pay for that practice. So. In the unlikely event, or very unlikely event, that some civilian woman found me attractive, yeah, I'd be confident in the bedroom because I've, you know, I've had plenty of practice. Um, but in terms of relationship, I'd, I'd, I'd have no confidence at all because I've never been in one. Uh, I probably never will be in one. But it is what it is. This video, I want to show you exactly what to say in a case where a woman turns you down, rejects you. When you're armed with this perfect response, you'll feel your fear of rejection just fade away and a new sense of confidence will emerge. You no, it won't. When you get rejected, it's going gonna, it's gonna, it's gonna to shatter your confidence. Do <laughs> you think saying some cheesy line back to a woman after she rejected you is going to improve your confidence? No, this is cope. You will be more open to approaching women you like and conveying your interest. In fact, you'll be more comfortable talking to beautiful women because you'll know that if it doesn't work out, that you know exactly how to deal with it. You see today, so keep watching. Hi, I am Marnie, and from here on out, I am going to be your very personal queen girl. And every week, I'm going to give you the no BS insider information about what. We also, this is no hate to Marnie. I would honestly collab with her at some point. I like. Why? Do I took guys off. Um, you know, this whole PUA industry, dating coaches, whatever they call them. It's just, it's just a, I don't know. It's a symptom of, symptom of the society we live in. You know, we we live in a clown world, really. Do I mean, you know, ask yourself this: Did our fathers' generation or grandfathers and generations before them, did they have to pay dating coaches and PUA on how to, on how to interact with women, and how to seduce them? Or men don't seduce women. Women, <laughs> women seduce them, and they find physically attractive. But y y you get my point. I mean. Previous generations of men didn't have to pay dating coaches on how to do this stuff. They previous generations of men they would meet their well, what, what would be their wives through mutual friends and acquaintances. They'd 
form connections with these women, uh, date them, uh, marry them, and have families, and you know, live happily ever after. Well, what, what do men have to pay these dating roaches and PUA scammers money on on how to do something that men have been doing for free for for generations? It's just it makes no sense. I would. This is no hate to her. This it's just like when female dating coaches give advice, either it's the lukewarm shit or it's anecdotal. Look, I don't mean to sound like a misogynist. I'm definitely not a misogynist. I love and respect women, and I mean that. I'm saying that from the heart. But it is one thing in the manosphere that all us men unanimously agree up agree upon, and that is that women give awful dating advice. And I'm not saying that to be mean or to be a misogynist. I'm not a misogynist. I do not hate women. I love and respect women. But they give awful dating advice. Let me give you an example. Women, women will say, oh, uh, when the female dating coach or for women in general, they say, oh, women want a guy that's nice, that treats them well. Okay. On the face of that, that seems totally plausible and logical. But who do women end up dating? I'm not saying all women do this, but who do a lot of women end up dating? They end up dating the abusive uh asshole or jerk or bad boy or wife basher you know that's a terrible thing to say but a lot of women are attracted to those kind of guys i remember i was watching a documentary on a particular police station here in sydney and they asked one of the general duties general duties police officers what jobs jobs they hate going out to the most and he said domestics and the journalist asked why because that what would happen is the the police would go out to a home where there was a, a report of domestic violence um, you know, the police would take down all the statements, do all the paperwork, and just before as that case is about to go to court, the battered woman um, would then uh, drop the charge. They look, officer, we've kissed and made up. Can you please withdraw? The, I wanted to withdraw the, withdraw the charge. So that poor policeman or woman, they wasted all their time doing all that paperwork to to take this. Uh, you know, wife bash it to court, and then then the, then the woman withdraws the charge. Now that said, you know, she'd never ever hit a woman. No, never. There's no there's no excuse for it. Um, uh, you know, she should never ever lay hands on a woman. That's you know, that, that's wrong. But sadly, some women are actually attracted to that kind of guy. I don't know why. <laughs> I don't know how any sane, rational person um, could be attracted to someone who treats them like shit. And engage and subjects them to either mental and or physical cruelty. But some women are like that sort of stuff. Like I can already tell it's anecdotal by the way she says rejection. Because guys, quite honestly, when you go to a club or a bar, women are more receptive than you think. No, they're not. They put walls up. Um they uh, no, and nightclubs and bars are the worst places to try and meet women. As we all know, they're sausage fest, and they always have been sausage fest. I can remember back in the nineteen, as far back as the nineteen eighties, which is what forty years ago, men complaining to me, "Oh, Master Yada went to this nightclub or this pub or bar, and that sucked." And I said, "Well, why did it suck?" And and the 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 response I always would get, oh, they're a sausage fest. There's just too many dudes, not enough women. That's why there's so much alcohol related violence in nightclubs and, and bars. You've got too many sexually thirsty men competing over too few women. Um and to to be perfectly honest, most women what few women that go to nightclubs, um, they just go there to dance and just hang out with their friends. They don't go there because they're on a hunt out for for dick i mean as we know women like dancing i mean I, I can't stand dancing i think it's ridiculous but yeah whatever um women just go to nightclubs and bars just to dance and also to uh, uh scab free free alcohol from the dump simps who buy them drinks look I'll, I'll have to confess that i i did buy some women drinks who are you know who are unsuccessfully tried to pick up but i didn't i only did that once or twice. I mean, you know, I'll let my listen more fast. Don't, don't buy women drinks. Don't. Unless she buys you one. Um, yeah. It's a, it's a, but, 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 you know, as we know, a lot of a lot of women, they, they do go to nightclubs to get free alcohol from, from, from dumb simps. 
It, I don't know. I understand being afraid of being turned down and then like, how do I do the walk away and shit? But you'd be surprised how uncomfortable women are to overtly be like, you're disgusting. Like that doesn't happen. And even if she says, oh, I have a boyfriend. Great. On to the next bitch. Um, she, she's got a point here. Um, you know, of all, the, of all the rejections I've copped and none of the women ever swore at me. You know, or cussed, what do you want to call it? Uh, none of them assaulted me or threatened me with assault. But then again, I don't give them a reason to. If I can, t if I can detect that interaction is going bad, i.e., her her body language is both negative and combative or dismissive, I will out the woman for a time and just walk away. That's all you can do. Uh, look, yeah, I mean, some of the women who rejected me were nice about it. Some, one, one in particular was really nice about it. But I remember about thirty years ago. Um, I was working at this place and um, on the ground floor of the building that I worked in, there was this really nice coffee shop and sometimes I'd have my lunch there and there was this really cute little waitress that I was, you know, who used to serve me. She was really nice, really polite. And um, I was making a bit of small talk with her and after about a couple of weeks of getting to know her, I asked her, you know, do you would like to go for a coffee or something? And she she said, oh, look, I'm sorry, I've got a, a boyfriend. And look, I didn't know. She you know, when I when I spoke to her previously, she, she didn't indicate to me that she had a boyfriend. I didn't see any engagement or wedding rings on her on her left hand, on left on her left finger. Um, so there's nothing. She, she didn't say anything. She had a boyfriend. And look, I, I profusely apologise because I, I I don't hit on other guys. When I, you know, I got more class than that, and, and I profusely apologise. Well, I'm sorry, lady. I, I did not know. If had I known, I would have never have asked you. And then she said something really nice. She goes, "But thank you for asking anyway." And I thought that was really sweet of her. You know, that was probably probably the nicest rejection I ever had. Um, she was really polite about it. You know, I, I might, you know, uh, that, that's that was really nice. I mean, she didn't have to say that. She could have just said no and that left it at that. But uh, no, she said thank you for asking anyway. And that was really sweet. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Look, most of them will probably reject you nicely. Look, a woman will only get cranky or get the shit if you don't if you don't um, read the signals or don't read her body language correctly. Uh, in many of my previous videos, I've stated that. Yeah, you get these. these I'm, talking, I'm referring to the male PUAs here. You, you watch them approach, cold approach a woman, and these guys get very pushy. Uh, the woman, uh, and to be fair, these women, they're, they're very polite and ladylike in rejecting these PUAs. But these PUAs don't get the hint, they go back. <laughs> they keep going back. Uh, I remember watching a, a PUA from Alex playing with fire, or as we call him in the Black Pill community, Alex playing with himself. Um, he's approaching a woman, she's politely rejecting him, and he keeps persisting. Oh, you don't want to do that. You you could get yourself into a lot of uh, potential legal hot water doing that kind of stuff. Um, yeah, but look at most women, they'll, they'll, they'll reject you politely. And, you know, if she, if you, as a man, and the, the, this is just common sense, I'm not, a, I'm not a dating coach or a PUA, this is just common sense. If, if a woman is giving you dismissive, hostile body language, just politely thank her for a time and just walk away. Don't don't escalate the situation. It's it's just stupid. You know what I mean? Like, not us. We're gonna actually go in. But I'm just saying, like, the I understand the rejection. I under like as somebody with social anxiety, I get it. But women are actually way receptive to conversation, even the ugly motherfuckers i know they will do the thing that's like that should be a line to leave just pretend like someone waved but most of the time they will give you the time of day she does have a point there look some of the women that i approached um they still rejected me but they still gave me a little bit of their time and had, had a conversation with me so i'll agree with on that but if you're just that unattractive like me for example a sub three subhuman um the conversation that you have with a woman will be very brief. Uh, you know, she'll give you the dirty looks, the silent treatment. And even if she does respond back, she'll just give you one word answers and, and you know, she won't uh, engage in the conversation with you. Even the ugly ones. It will take her, if she doesn't try to get out of the conversation within the first 15 seconds and she's by herself, give it 30 seconds. If she turns to you, then you're fine. Easier said than done. We'll talk about it. Really? No, that's not entirely true. I've approached women who rejected me. Now, I've had, you know, I've, I've spoken to them for a good couple of minutes. Um, 
even up to 30 minutes or so, they still rejected me. They've just been, you know, they've just been generous with their time. So, no, I don't totally agree with that. Look, if a woman's into you, if she's attracted to you, she'll, she'll let you know. Um, you know, she'll move in on your personal space or she'll allow you to move in on her personal space. She'll constantly smile at you. Um, she'll flirt with you. She may even mention sexual things to you. It's pretty easy to tell when a woman's into you. You want versus what they say they want, plus instantly effective methods to win over any girl you like. So hit that subscribe button now so you know. No, that's, that's, just mis that's just false and misleading invitation. You can't attract any woman you want. That depends on your looks. I mean, if you're an ugly guy or an average-looking guy, your dating options are pretty limited, particularly if you're sub three. Um, or if, when you're sub three like me, you don't have any dating options. Because even women at your looks level want to date up as you know, because of hypergamy or female hypergamy. Um, your dating options are, as a man are pretty... Um, uh, what's the word? They're pretty restricted to your looks, to your to your looks. If you're not a good-looking guy, it's going to be tough. Uh, it's going to be tough for you to attract any woman, <laughs> let alone a hot-looking one. Never miss a video. Okay, before I dive in, I want to tell you a surefire way to avoid getting rejected: having good skin. Which is why I'm happy to tell you about today's video sponsor. T we are both sponsored by Tish Hanley. So what she says, use my code though, Torsha30. And because... Oh, they're just flogging off some male moisturizer. Probably. Yeah, look, I mean, obviously, the bit, the more presented you are, the, the better, um, you know, it's going to give you more chances with women. But, but if you're just, you've got an ugly face, what's, what's moisturizer going to do? Tish Hanley is sponsoring today's video. They're offering my viewers a great deal. So... Just click the first link in the description and you will get 30% off your first box plus a free gift. Seriously, that's like amazing. So click that link and get started today. I will say it really bothered me that they wouldn't tell me what the free gift was. <laughs> yeah, it's Torsha with two A's 30. There should be a link. If it doesn't come up, I can find it for y'all. All right, now let's dive in. So before I tell you what to do if a woman rejects you, I need to tell you the three important truths about rejection that you should always remember. 99% of men don't know this and it keeps them from getting the women they want. Bullshit. That's cope. 99%. How does she know that? Where, where did she pull that figure out? Out of her ass? That's ridiculous. When woman rejects you, rejects you. Fine. Okay. It sucks. Just accept it. Thank the woman for a time and walk away. That's all you can do. If you're going to persist after she's rejected you, ooh, you can get yourself into a lot of legal trouble, and you really don't want, you don't want to go there. Okay, look, rejection sucks. I, you know, nobody likes it. It's just a fact of life. Um, but then again, you shouldn't be cold approaching women because that's going to end in cert that's going to end in almost certain rejection. It, it, it will. I mean, you, you don't approach a woman unless she gives you the green light to do so, and then it becomes a warm approach, not a cold one. These PUAs and Dating roaches, they give awful advice to men. Awful advice. You, you can't stop yourself from getting rejected or friend zoned, or just, that's the same thing anyway. Um, if she's going to reject you, she's going to reject you, and there's nothing you can do about it. From experiencing the dating life they truly deserve. Marnie, I'm bored. Come on. And I do not want you to be one of them. So listen to these three things carefully. Note them down if you need to, and never forget it. Truth number one, there's no reason to be embarrassed by a rejection. Most guys take rejection way too personally. Well, of course you do. We all take rejection personally. Um, I mean, you shouldn't, but look, let's, let's be honest. People do. Um, they, they may not care to admit it, but, but we, we take, as people, we take rejection person. But let me tell you who doesn't take rejection well, and that's women. And I'm not saying that to be a misogynist. I'm just... I'm not saying I love and respect women, but let's keep shit real here. Um, the women, the reason why women don't take rejection well is because they're really on the receiving end of it. As we know, women are the choosers when it comes to sex and relationships. And uh, so they're doing most of the rejecting, as, as they're perfectly entitled to do. I mean, if they don't like a particular guy, fine. Then it's, it's, the women are well within their rights to reject that particular man. 
but when, when women are on the receiving end of it, oh, they don't take it well. They get really shitty. Um, I remember I was watching I was watching one of those cheesy reality TV shows. I think it was the Bat the Bachelor, the US edition. And uh, there was this one Chad that about thirty women were were fighting over. And uh, the first woman woman that was eliminated from the show was this uh, doctor. She's in her early thirties. Not, not she wasn't bad looking, but. She was one of the first women to be eliminated, and did she get the shit? She had the biggest meltdown, um, probably because of a sense of entitlement. You know, oh, look, you know, I'm entitled to a to a Chad, and when Chad rejected, I mean, he, he was nice about it. Um, oh, did she get the shits? You know, um, yeah, but but with men, yeah, obviously we're going to be on the receiving end of most of that rejection, and. Um, Look, yeah, it sucks, but it is what it is. I mean, if a woman rejects you, just politely thank her for a time and walk away. That's what I do. But with me, with me, most of my rejections didn't even get to the stage for me to ask the woman out for her for her to say no. I already knew I got rejected just by looking at the body language. If if you're if a woman's giving you bad body language, don't waste her time and your time asking her out. Look, you've been rejected. Um, you know, read the body language, interpret it correctly, and it's not hard. Thank her for a time and walk away and feel embarrassed by it. I get it, I used to be like that. They feel that if a woman rejects them, they are not. Guys, I know I said something very similar and I know shit, oh, bitch. I shouldn't say this as somebody with eight certifications in bartending. I take alcohol training very seriously, but there's a thing that is in the binder I was talking about and two drinks or a shot in a beer is like the perfect amount to have just enough liquid courage and still be very coherent but also not really give a fuck you like are looking for your friends if she if you've got to drink alcohol get drunk to have enough balls uh, or enough cojones <laughs> to talk to women that's that's pretty sad um but that's why a lot of men do get drunk in nightclubs and bars to give them the, the dutch courage to talk to women that's pretty sad you know you should have enough balls without alcohol or drugs to be able to do that. But I can sort of understand why guys do that because um, a lot of women, uh, they've got walls up. They've got their walls up. They really do. And they're about as, I'm not saying all women, but some women are about as approachable as a seven-meter long great white shark. Um, better still, I'll, I'll take my chance with a great white shark. But, um, yeah, a lot of women do have walls up. A lot of women are very rude. I mean, look, if a woman's going to reject a guy... Be nice about it. Be, be polite. Look, I, I'm look, I'm I'm pretty lucky. Most of the women who rejected me were polite about it. But then again, I can I do pick up. You know, I'm I'm, and I'm not saying this in an arrogant way because I'm not an arrogant person. But I, I think I'm pretty good at picking up social cues and body language. If I detect any uh, dismissive, negative body language from a woman, I thank her for a time and uh, leave her alone. And that's why I've never been, you know sworn at or assault or written with a sop woman because i get the hint pretty fast if a woman wants you to get lost you get lost and i i do you know if, when i when i've had any dismissive combative hostile body language from a woman i get the hint straight away so sorry lady it's sorry to bother you you have you, know, you have a great night and i'll leave her alone that's all you can do rejects you two drinks either a shot in a beer or two mixed drinks Two mixed drinks, it'll hit you at once, but it's my advice, okay? You just need liquid courage. That's terrible advice. Absolutely terrible advice. Uh, well, obviously, she would say this because she works in the alcohol industry. <laughs> you know, she wants to uh, sell more alcohol for the nightclub or bar that she works at. Uh, but no, that's terrible. Guys, yeah. You shouldn't need to get drunk to have enough balls to talk to a woman. You know, you, you, I mean, I, I'm a non-drinker. I don't take drugs. I've never have taken drugs, and I never will take them. Um, when I approach women, I was stone cold sober every time. Uh, but I can understand why guys do get nervous because there are, there are a lot of women out there. Not saying all of them, but there are a lot of women out there that are about as approachable and friendly as a great white shark. It's not that bad. It's their ego, Marnie. But I'm just saying, as somebody who's seen millions and millions of Tinder dates, Bumble dates, first interactions, it's not as bad as you imagine it. It's probably still going to hurt, but two drinks. Enough for anybody else. 
They question their own self-worth and feel ashamed of themselves. But there's nothing to be ashamed of. Or... I'm sorry. Being rejected is embarrassing and humiliating. And, and, and it's a very humbling experience. Very humbling experience. Um, and it changes you as a person. Uh, I don't know if you recall, the, oh, I think last year or maybe the year before, I, I, I made a video titled How, how, how um, Being Inkwell Changes Your Personality. It's definitely changed my personality. Like it hasn't turned me into an arsehole or a scumbag. I mean, I, I think for the most part I'm, a, I'm an okay person. I'm a fairly decent person. I mean, I, I treat people the way I like to be treated. Um, yeah, you'd be nice to me and I'll be nice to you. Uh, but it's definitely changed my personality. When I was much younger, I was more outgoing. Not in the sense that I was the life of the party or an extra or anything like that, but I was a lot more outgoing and more confident in, in talking to girls. But when you cop nothing but rejection, it really humbles you. It um, yeah, it does. And believe me, getting rejected or friend zoned is the same shit. It is embarrassing and humiliating. And the reason why I gave up on dating 12 years ago i just didn't want to subject myself to any more humiliation you know i'm not a masochist i think a lot of these wannabe puas are masochists they cold approach women or approach women can't always get rejected and they keep persisting i don't know why i mean like you know what's what's the definition of insanity you keep doing the same thing over and over again expecting a different result yeah that's the definition of insanity you know i i gave up because i i'd had enough i mean obviously i'm you know my sub three subhuman looks no one wants me and um you know that, and that's why i pay for play because it's the only way i'm going to get laid when i don't have to pay for it but it's you know it is what it is um but in saying that look i'm not encouraging other guys to give up on on, on dating that's really a personal decision each in, in, each individual man has to make and particularly for the younger guys look if you if you if any approach a handful of them they've all rejected you obviously you know, keep you know, keep going and see if you can turn things around if you can. Um, but if you're you know, in your 30s and 40s and beyond and you're still having no luck, regardless of how well you're presenting yourself to women, there comes a time where you got to say, look, you know, this is this is this is not going to happen. This simply just not going to happen. I'm just I'm pretty probably better off just just giving up and just uh, you know pay for play. Embarrassed about look what you you saw a woman that you liked. You went up to her and put yourself on the line that is ballsy i can't even women don't give a fuck okay they're looking to reject so let's not undermine it okay queen i will say for all the women that you think are way out of your league they get hit on the least amount because you guys assume that they get hit on the most do that that's mm, that's that's an interesting point um with really hot looking women yeah sometimes they don't get approached that much I and mean, you think that's you know, you think that that wouldn't be the case because they're so attractive. Sometimes, I'm not saying all the time, but sometimes hot-looking women don't get approached because men are just so intimidated by them. I know I am. I'm, I'm totally intimidated and shit scared of really beautiful women because I know I've got no chance with them. So why, why waste her time and waste my time? I got taught a very brutal and savage lesson on not to approach women out of my league. It, I mean, of the 230 odd women that have rejected me once again 100 in person and the Romania the remaining um online i could only say two of them were like hot looking stacys the rest were pretty were, you know they're they okay but i'd say two of them were, were what you describe as a hot looking stacy yeah i tried to talk to them and uh, yeah i got brutally rejected it was it was savage i mean i remember in one case i tried to talk to this really hot looking girl and she just just turned her back she didn't even say anything back to me she just um ignored me like i like i was invisible yeah but yeah um yeah look something look sometimes yeah you could have a a really hot looking woman and no guy approaches them because they're just shit scared and that's that's understandable um because because speaking for myself whilst i'm in awe of a woman's beauty it also intimidates me as well because i know i've got no chance with them you know shows courage how many guys can do that women don't have to do that okay i bet you that 99 out of 100 guys you see walking around you are terrified of asking a woman out and if you're that one in 100 who did it you should be proud also even the chads get nervous just saying their voice just quiver i can hear it in my head right now okay
yeah it might have stuck with me but we were also like creating all those reports so it's something to keep in mind one of the easiest ways to keep your voice from shaking is to speak with your diaphragm if you guys have ever done voice lessons you know what i'm talking about but shoulders back make a huge difference too i would do i would always get a little tipsy for my public speeches i'm telling you two drinks dude but posture makes a huge difference just be thankful you have somewhere to put your hands when you have a drink in your hand Okay, think of it that way. You should. Um, a few things here. Uh, the, the reason why men get nervous when they're talking to them or approach to them, and I look, you know, I speak from personal experience. I tell you why guys get nervous and scared. There, as a man, when you're approaching a woman, you're obviously you're observing her her body language, unless you have twenty degree Aspergers, and most guys don't have Aspergers. I, I definitely don't. Obviously, you're observing her body language. Now, if you detect any negative, combative, dismissive body language or you detect any anger in her voice, obviously, you're going to get nervous because you're going to go into fight or flight mode. You're going to, you're saying to yourself, oh, 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 shit, this is going bad. Is she going to, you know, is she going to humiliate me? Uh, yeah, this is, this is going really bad. And then you react. You, I suppose, I, I don't know if you say you panic, but you get nervous, you, you know, the interaction is going bad and you're, you know, you're looking at a, at, at a, at a humiliating rejection and that's why you get nervous. Um, yeah, and, then, you know, um, and that's why guys sadly have to get intoxicated to have enough balls to talk to women, which you shouldn't do. I mean, every time I've spoken, approached a woman, I've been stone cold sober. Well, then again, I'm a non-drinker and I don't take drugs. Um, now, Tasha said something, yeah, that even ch chads get nervous. No, they wouldn't, because if a chad approaches a woman, that's usually well, in, in, after that woman's given him the green light to do so, because because he's a chad, he's not going to be nervous. He's going to be confident because, because the woman's going to allow him to be confident. Um, you know, as we all know, confidence is a self-assured feeling, free of self-doubt the one will achieve a positive or favorable outcome based on previous success or previous performance accomplishment. You know, you can only be as confident with a woman as she allows you to be. So if a woman's giving you strong uh, choosing signals, indicators of interest, you're not going to be nervous. You're going to become confident because, of, wow, you know, this this woman's, a, you know, she likes me. She's, she's giving me positive validation and reinforcement. So chads aren't going to be nervous when they talk to women. They're going to be very calm and confident because the woman's allowing them to be. Feel awesome. You should feel special. And listen, I'm not just saying that to pump your ego. That is a fact. It takes a lot of courage to put yourself on the line like that. Something most guys, most people never do. That's the objective reality, whether you choose it or not. Okay, she's going to, she, look, she's made a point I do agree with. As a man, it takes a lot of balls for you to, you to approach a woman. Um, and try and ask her out or whatever, because uh, you're effectively putting your ego on the line. And, um, yeah, it takes a lot of balls. Uh, but I can see why a lot of guys don't do it. Um, they're probably rejected a lot, and they don't want to go through that again. I mean, I, I certainly don't want to go through that shit again. No way. Um, if you were to ask me, Master Yoda, what's your biggest regret or what's the biggest mistake you made in your life, I would simply tell you, trying to find a wife or a girlfriend and I, like i know it's easy to be wise after the event but if i knew that i was going to cop all that rejection and all the all, the, all the depression and and you know all the destruction of confidence that, that it's caused me i would have never done it no way in hell <laughs> no way now but i guess it's easy to be wise after it that's why i envy a lot of you um younger ink wells uh, at least you've had the internet to to turn to I mean, I did have the internet to turn to, but I didn't. I didn't discover. I did not discover uh, the the Black Pill Inkle community until two thousand and eight. Um, yeah, but anyway, that's just what it is. All right. Next truth number two: the men who have the most success with women also face the most rejections. No, they don't. The men who have the most success with women are going to be your chads. They rarely get rejected. Yeah, look, chads can get rejected too. I'm not saying that. Every Chad 
then that, that you know he's going to have a 100% strike rate. No, that's impossible. Even Chads get rejected, but they get rejected far less. So rejection is going to affect them a lot less than than say an ugly guy. So for argument's sake, a Chad asks out ten women, right? Five of them might, might tell him to get fucked. Five will five will say yes. So the, those rejections won't hurt him because the Chad knows that a yes is just around the corner. If you're an ugly guy. Um, you're getting nothing but no's, and you don't know when that yes is going to come, if it comes. <laughs> and that's a very, very big if. So, no, the guys who are most successful women are your top 5 to 10% of guys in terms of looks. I'm sorry, that's just the way it is. Um, I've observed it multiple times. Other members of the Black Pill Inquiry community that I've spoken to, they've told me the same thing. They've either been friends with or been acquainted with Chad's um or giga chads and they've seen exactly the same thing that these chads and giga chads they absolutely clean up when it comes to them and, i mean for example that my chad friend that i went on the cruise with back in 1992 um not just that cruise but other, in other social events or or functions that i i went you know, that i went out with them when we went out, went out drinking for, for drinks or something um he cleaned up with women he never he really got rejected he, i mean to use an american baseball term he basically hit a home run every time with the ladies um and he didn't he, he didn't use any so-called game he just simply put himself out there the women saw him they gave him the choosing signals and the rest is history so now Marnie's talking out of her ass here the guys who are most successful with women are, you chat, are, the, are those top guys in terms in terms of uh looks as for the guys who get women because of their mates so say you have an ugly but rich guy um who gets lots of women that the women that he gets they're not generally attracted to him they're just gold diggers after his money right so you can't say those guys are good with women they just buy their women uh, the, the guys that get the true genuine attraction from in those, those those chads um they're the they're the guys who are cleaning up and they really get rejected. It's true. This is something most men find really hard to accept. It's easy to look at a guy. It's all a numbers game, right? It's just like generic, okay? No, and that's not even true. It's not, because some people are blessed. Some people, a lot of times, this is something that I remember taking down in the binder. The men that were chads or tall, good looking, they all grew up with sisters. And I think that gives them an advantage. No, it doesn't. That's absolute bullshit. Whether a Chad grows up, <coughs> excuse me, whether a Chad grows up with sisters or brothers is irrelevant. If he's a Chad, he's going to do well with them because of his looks, not because he lives with, because he had sisters. I'm sorry, that's, that's absolute bullshit. It really does. It's almost like single dads that have daughters and shit because you have the ability to connect with women, understand the creepiness that maybe a guy without sisters doesn't get. But this was a trend, a very big trend. Who has a lot of success with women and think, oh, wow, he must get girls all the time. Lucky bastard. But the truth is that top 1% of men who date and sleep with amazing, beautiful women, they also get rejected a lot. No, no they don't. Bullshit. That's crap. That 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 top one percent, or even five to ten percent of guy, in terms of looks, looks, they really get rejected. My Chad friend, the one I won the cruise with, he really got rejected. Really got rejected. I mean, I, I attended many social functions with him, including that cruise, and he cleaned up every single time. Four years after the cruise, and the cruise was in 992. In 996, he, he invited me to his Bucks Night, or what you Americans refer to as a bachelor party. And he picked up two girls, two, not just one, two. I mean, picking up one woman's bloody hard, but to get two, <laughs> um, no, uh, no. When, when you're a Chad, um, you're playing the dating game on God mode, and you don't need any so-called game. Not, 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 not the game exists. That's, that, that's just bullshit. So no, man, you're talking out of your ass again. Oh, what they do is that they buy a table and make the servers bring bitches to them. Sorry to break it to y'all. That's the game. In fact, they. Oh, bullshit. What? I think what Tash is referring to here is um, there's a thing in some, some nightclubs. I'm not sure if it's here in Australia, but I believe it's very big in America. A thing called bottle service where you 
where you pay a certain amount of money. I think uh, one one nightclub that I was looking at um, on the I was looking at their website. I was in um, in Miami there in Florida. Start at three hundred fifty dollars, right up to four thousand dollars for a VIP room. I think yeah, you get so many bottles and I mean I don't know, what dumb simp would do that. What idiot would do that? I mean, all you're going to do is you're just going to uh, or supposedly attract, and I use the word attract loosely here. Women who are just after free alcohol, free drinks. Um, what, a, what a waste of money. I mean, I think nightclubs are a waste of Well, I think nightclubs are shit. I never went to nightclubs, but... <coughs> Excuse, me. <coughs> Excuse me, sorry. The guys who are going to do well in the nightclubs are going to be the chads. And they're, and they're not going to need to waste copious amounts of money on bottle service or VIP areas to attract women. <coughs> Look, the only guys who pick up in nightclubs and bars are the chads, right? If you if you want to pick up a woman in a nightclub or a bar, you really your looks have really got to stand out, yeah, and I mean really stand out because they're sausage fests. You're competing against a whole lot of other guys, and women are always going to pick the best option. They always any day of the week, any day of the week. Uh, you know. Um, if you know, you could have, you could have a nightclub, and if there's, well, as I said, they usually sausage fest. If there's any one good-looking guy, all the women would chase that one guy. They will, they will. So, no, Tasha, you're talking nonsense here. I get rejected. That was my job. I wouldn't even be working, and I would get spenders text me like, "Hey, can you come in so you can bring girls to the table, even the good-looking ones?" Okay. Way more than bullshit. Good-looking guys wouldn't need to do that. A really good-looking guy, if he was in a nightclub or a bar, he wouldn't have to waste money on, on that ridiculous bottle service or VIP or whatever b- bullshit they crap they call it. He'd simply put himself out there. Women would give him the choosing signals. They would meet, and the rest is history. Um, if you've got a simp for women, as in buy alcohol for them, it, it's a wrap. They're not attracted to you. If you need to use that crap, sorry, this lady um, is talking rubbish. The average guy, and that's because they put themselves out there more often. They're not guarding themselves. They talk to more women. They f- also the guys at the table can get rid of the amogs, the alpha males of the group. Get this guy away from my table. The one that will sit at the bottle and not pay. Yeah. So their scenario is so different. I think you guys see it like, oh, these rich motherfuckers. It's like, okay, but everything's facilitated. I think Dan Bill Zarian said it before. Set yourself up for to be in the best position possible same idea it's like throw the party if you want to be that guy so the girls come to you with more women okay just on dan bowser and i don't know i don't know too much about the guy i've seen a few videos about him my understanding is that his dad was a ceo of some company uh, or he's high up in some company and he ripped off a whole lot of money like you know embezzled a whole lot of money and um, before he was sent to prison he placed that money in in a in an offshore trust fund for dan um although in fairness to dan bowser i believe he's a very good uh, gambler he's a professional gambler in one interview dan bowser said that he made 50 million dollars i assume that's 50 us dollars million dollars when he won a professional poker game so he's you know he, so he does know how to make money if you look at this Dan Bazarian guy, he has these parties where he invites, well, I assume he pays a whole lot of really hot-looking women to attend his uh, his mansion. I believe he also makes them sign uh, sign NDAs, non-disclosure agreements, so they don't try and you know file any, try any press any any try any, you know try and pull a stun on him, like you know press a false you know grape allegation or anything crazy like that. He gets them to sign NDAs. Look. I mean, good luck to Dan Bazaar. Obviously, he's a good businessman. He knows how to make money. But the women, he he pays those women to come. Um, look, if if you if you need if you, if you need money to supposedly attract women, you're better off just going to a hooker. Really, it's an honest transaction. You know where you stand. But don't get me wrong. As a man, you should always be trying to make as much money as you can, whether whether that be through your your career or your business if you happen to be self-employed, but whatever you do, don't use it as a flex or as a carrot to supposedly attract women because you're putting a big target on your back for gold diggers and users. Look, if you're an unattractive, you're an unattractive yet you're wealthy, um, 
just pay for play. <laughs> you know where you stand. Um, if you think a woman marrying uh, marrying you for your money actually loves you, you're delusional. Men, they truly explore their options, which means they also get turned down by more women, which is perfectly natural. No matter how good your game is or how attractive you are, you're going to be turned down by women for their own reasons. Reasons you. Um, when you're attractive, you're, going to, you're already going to be turned down. And once again, game does not exist, right? Game is a stupid, retarded term used by the PUA scammers and dating roaches to fleece unattractive men out of their money. You know, they, they push this bullshit that if you can somehow push the right emotional buttons on a woman, that that's going to get her to overlook your physical shortcomings and will get her to sleep with you. It doesn't work. If you do not pass that look test with a woman, there will be no chance of sex. Nada, nil, nente, nothing. Gone. Zero. Oh, these, these PUA scammers and dating roaches give me the raw fucking shit with their bullshit and, and scamming. You know, men have got to wake up. You know, you got, guys have got to wake up. Take take the black pill. You know, you take the black pill and it'll it'll it'll, it'll protect you from these these, these PUA predators. Well, that's what they are. They're predators. These PUA scammers and dating roaches. They're, they're predators. They they prey on vulnerable usually physically unattractive men. Avoid them at all costs. Just control. But the great thing is when you're putting yourself out there and talking to more women, you're increasing your chances of success. You're increasing your chances of finding and attracting some amazing, gorgeous woman. In my Not necessarily. Um, what what Marnie is, is saying here is just play the numbers game. Yeah, okay, yeah. Obviously, the more women you approach, the the chance that you may meet one, but you could theoretically approach thousands of women and have little to no results. Uh, many years ago, um, when I was on the old, I can't remember whether it was PUA hate or slut hate, I was conversing with another member there and he told me this story that just totally blew me away. He told me that he'd been rejected by up to 50, he, sorry, he'd approached 15,000 women for only 15 lays. And I wrote back to the guy and I said, oh, you know, like, I'm sorry, mate, you had to go through that. That's that's, that's terrible. Uh, you know, that's whew. But how, over what period of time was that, were those 15,000 approaches for 15 days? And he said, oh, 10 years. And I thought about it. I said, yeah, that's, that's, that's plausible. I mean, you think about it. If you go out once a week, say on a Friday night, you approach, say, I don't know, 30 women a night, uh, times that over a year, what, there's 52 weeks in a year. Yeah, easy. If you do that for, you know, just under 10 years or so. But, I mean, he must have been very thick-skinned. He must have been able to desensitise himself to all that rejection. I gave up after, you know, 220 or 230. Once again, 130 of those were online ones. Only 100, only 100 of those rejections were face-to-face, -face, and that was enough for me. And I, I replied back to him. Once again, I, I sympathised with the situation. And I said, look, sorry, mate, you had, you had to go through that. that. That must have been hell. And I told him that um, I'd been rejected um, about 220, 230 times. And then I gave up. And he he, he replied back. And he actually said something quite nice. He said, uh, Master Yad, I sure, wish I, was, I sure wish I was more like you. I, I wish I I wish I gave up when you did, you know, after, after 100 or so rejections. Um, and I could tell this guy was pretty depressed, and I feel for the guy. I really do. Um, you know, as a man, if you've got to cold approach women using PUA tactics, which is really, I mean, in the day, PUA, in addition to being a scam, it's nothing more than a sophisticated form of begging for sex. It's bloody pathetic. It really is. I mean, why do it to yourself? Um, this is another reason they should legalise prostitution or sex work in the U.S., so men don't have to do this bullshit. They have to pay dating scammers and dating roaches to to cold approach women and get rejected by them and, and you know, further humiliating themselves and destroying their self confidence. Just you know, yeah, I don't know. My career as a dating expert, I've known many naturals from across the world. Guys who are seemingly flawless with women, guys who date the type of girls most men can only dream about. And I can tell you 
that none of them get every woman they interact with. And I can tell you, all of them get nervous still. In fact, they actually get turned down more often than you'd imagine. It's like basketball legend Michael Jordan once said. This is a great quote. I failed over and over again, and that's why I succeeded. So that sums up the story of every natural that I've ever met. Bullshit. The only thing that, got, that makes a guy a natural with women is his looks. I'm sorry. Um, you're, not, you're an ugly guy. Uh, you're not going to be a natural woman. You're going to be a complete failure with them. And that's not your fault. I mean, that's because of your looks. Um, every natural, the guys who pull the hottest women, they tend to be pretty good looking themselves. Um, yeah. <laughs> um, would a natural or a Chad, would he get nervous with, with women? Probably not because um, the woman's going to give him so much positive reinforcement and validation, which will increase his confidence because he knows that he's going to get laid. So he's not going to be nervous because the woman's not going to make him nervous. As I said previously, the only reason why men, and I would include myself, I definitely include myself. Sorry, I'm getting, I'm getting tongue-tied here. The, the, the reason why a lot of men get nervous when they're interacting with a woman, and I, I speak from personal experience, is they can see the woman's giving them dismissive hostile body language. They can see the woman's getting angry. She's getting the shits. I mean, she's getting really, really angry. And as a man, what happens there? You either, I don't know, you either panic or you go into fight or flight mode. Um, and you get nervous because or you're saying, uh oh, this is going bad. Um, how do I get out of this? <laughs> and I think the real, I mean, obviously the, the most logical and sensible thing to do is just thank the woman for her time and just leave her alone. And just and just leave it at that. But that's that's why that's why guys get nervous because they can they can they're observing the female's hostile body language and they're reacting to it, which, which is which is perfectly natural. And the day you're a human being, you know, you're gonna to react to a certain situation. You know, if you see a woman is getting angry, well, you're gonna get nervous. That's that, that's just natural. For example, you know, for you know, if you're in a how do I put this? Um, you're in a scary situation, you know, for example, you're, you, you're going for a walk and there's this really vicious dog that looks like it wants to attack you. Well, you're going to get nervous, aren't you? <laughs> because, you know, you, you fear for your safety. And the same thing applies when, um, I suppose the same thing applies when you're approaching a woman who's getting angry with you. Um, yeah, you're going to get nervous because you can, you can see her anger. The trick is not to take it personally and move on without much thought. I know that's hard, but that's what you gotta do. The more, you, more time you spend thinking about the rejection, the more time you waste. Top guys, take it on the chin. I forgot to add that the two drinks and being rejected once and having a goal in mind works for dudes. If you're with your guy friends, they're like, okay, on to the next one and try to do it in under 15 minutes. You want to get rejected then, right? Because you want to finish approaching 15 bitches. Reframe your shit. Make this a game. Whoever doesn't, whoever doesn't approach the same amount of bitches has to pay the whole tab. Men love challenges. Move on to the next. Oh, that's ridiculous. That is absolutely ridiculous. Firstly, you don't need to, you don't need to get drunk or, as we say here in Australia, pissed to have enough balls to talk to a woman. You should be able to approach a woman stone cold sober. Um. But the, now these ladies are talking absolute rubbish. Uh, Look, as I said before, nightclubs and bars are the worst environments to try and meet women. They're sausage fests. You compete against better-looking dudes. Uh, no. And even if you are able to fluke it and pick up a girl on a nightclub, right, is the sex going to be that good? Chance are you, you're both going to be pissed as farts. Sorry, pissed means drunk in Australia. And um, the sex ain't going to be that good. You've also got the, 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 the potential risk that she could fall a false allegation against you and it has happened i mean obviously you know any sex you should have with them should should be consensual should always be consensual but what's to stop her from waking up the next morning and saying you know experience buyer's remorse and 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 she decides to follow file a false allegation against you, you know, she, that, could, that could potentially ruin your life um and also to you on a cost to benefit analysis it's actually cheaper just to pay for play. Once you factor in the cost of nightclub entry fees, alcohol, even if you buy alcohol for yourself, 
food, you're probably going to eat something. And obviously the very expensive Uber or taxi fare, you're going to have to pay to, to get home. Because obviously, you know, if you've had a, if you've had a bit to drink, you're not going to drive home because you're going to, you don't want to get caught by the police for, for DUI. So, yeah, just, just pay for play. It's just cheaper and you get laid guaranteed. That's how they get so many girls so fast. That's what they do. All right, moving on to the truth. Number three, rejection is literally just five seconds of discomfort. If you really think about it, rejection is just five seconds. No, they remember it for like a life, Marnie. But like, I know what you mean. I know. I yeah, it might be. Yeah, it might be five seconds, but you you never forget that rejection. I mean, I I don't forget my rejections. I mean, it's it's not fun. I mean, it, see, this is and look once again. I'm not a misogynist. I'm not saying anything again. I do not hate women, but if there's one thing that women absolutely suck at, that I mean, they're absolutely hopeless. That women are hopeless at empathy. They are. They just they just do not have the ability to place themselves in the shoes of someone who's less fortunate than themselves. They really don't. I mean, women, you know, they just uh, dismiss rejection like it's nothing. The reason why women dismiss rejection because they don't have to deal with it, they don't have to contend with it. I mean, women being the choosers, they obviously, they obviously, they obviously dish out more rejection than being on the receiving end of it. So they don't, they don't know what it's like. They don't know what it's like. It's like me as a man saying to a woman, I know what it's like to have a baby or have a period. How the, how the fuck would I know? I don't have a, a woman's private parts. How can I say that to a woman? I don't know. I, how the fuck would I know? And I wouldn't, you know, I mean, you can try and empathise. I mean, obviously, when a woman gives birth, I mean, wonderful thing that is when she brings new life into the world. Um, it's also very painful for obvious reasons. You know, I'd, I'd be insulting a woman's intelligence. I'd say, oh, yeah, I know what it's like to have a baby. How the, how the fuck would I know? Um, so I find it very disingenuous, disingenuous and, and very patronizing when women, um, try and downplay rejection because they've, they've, not, they've never been on the receiving end of it. It's like a rich person, someone who's been born into wealth talking, you know, just saying to a poor person, oh, you know, I know what it's like to be poor. No, you don't know what it's like to be poor. You've had the silver spoon in your mouth you, you, from, from when you were born. How the fuck would you know what poverty is like? Yeah, so women women suck when it comes to empathy. They simply cannot place them shoes, place their, their, themselves in, in the shoes of another person, particularly an, an unattractive man that no woman wants. I shouldn't condone drinking, but honestly, you won't give a fuck. Of discomfort. You ask her out, she tells you no, and gives you this some explanation for it, like I have a boyfriend, or I don't see you that way, or I'm not looking to date right now, or like something like that, right? But it's hardly even... Five. I know I keep stopping it, but let me just say, even the girls that like you are going to turn you down. They want to see if you're going to keep trying. No, no, no. That is terrible advice. Bullshit. I think what Tasha is alluding to here is, is a shit test. Women don't shit test men they're attracted to. And what I think what also Tasha is saying is, oh, when a woman says no, she really means yes. That is terrible advice. Do you know how much legal hot water and shit you can get into if you keep persisting, keep uh, pursuing a woman who's rejected you? Oh, my God. I've heard some bad dating advice from women and PUAs, but this would have to be the worst, hands down. Oh, my, oh my goodness. People are paying money for this shit? This is dog shit. When a woman turns you down either verbally or or for a body language. Most times it'll be for a body language, guys. It will be. I mean, most of my rejections were body language ones. It didn't even get to the stage for me to ask her out. I already knew I'd been rejected just by observing the body language. So this suggestion that that even when, uh, when, when a woman, um, the suggestion that when a woman says no, she really means yes, that is Terrible advice. Oh, oh, that's what can I say, guys? I'm just flabbergasted. It's a reflex for us to reject your ass. So, like, that's when you go in. I don't know. Look, Kim. No, women don't reject chads. Nope. <laughs> no fucking way. Absolute. Sorry, Torsha, you're talking absolute rubbish. That is. Oh, that's. Oh. oh. But is are, this the advice? Jesus. What do you say if she has a boyfriend, Marnie? Seconds, five seconds that you'll feel awkward 
or uncomfortable and then it's over after that. You're free to move on to a different woman or if it doesn't turn in that direction, you're with her. Are these five seconds really worth being worried about? I bet you are strong enough to handle that. Every guy is. It's just that in your own head, you make a bigger deal out of it. And I get it. I totally get it. You exaggerate what will happen when a woman rejects you and it manifests into something so big and you think it's the end of the world. But in reality, if you just look at it, it's just a ridiculously short of that. What do guys think? Like when you think of being rejected, what goes through your head? Like simple humiliation embarrassment see once again this is where women are absolutely bloody hopeless when it comes to empathy they have no empathy for men zero zero empathy they simply cannot put themselves into the shoes of a man particularly an unattractive man that no woman wants let me tell you something if a woman had to swap places with me not that you want to she wouldn't last five seconds seriously she would um take the easy way out if you know what i mean she'd self-delete herself she would if she if she if she has to see what i have to put up with particularly when it comes to women that delete themselves i get yeah. and actually there was a story a little while ago there was a woman i think she may have been a feminist she pretended to be a man to see what it was like and this the experience was so harrowing for her so depressing that very tragically this this young lady ended up self-deleting herself and may she rest in peace but because she saw how hard it was. It was just brutal. She said, Jesus, this is this is this is terrible. And another thing, and just another thing, I think it just proves the the mental fortitude of a lot of men in the equal community that they don't take the easy way. And I, I really gotta take my hat off to my fellow inquels that um, that well hopefully none of them do do take the easy way out. Because I mean being inquel can can cause depression. I mean I've had two nasty bouts of depression because of it. When I look back, it's silly. Um, you know, don't don't blame or kick yourself or beat yourself up for something that's not your fault and it's completely out of your control. And um, I have to thank the black pill community for that. They, uh, to me, taking the black pill is probably the best antidepressant I've ever taken, hands down. And to any other men out there who are listening to this, look, if you're getting to the stage where you're starting to have some, you know, disturbing or dark thoughts about being equal, well, please, whether you don't, you know, don't take the easy way out. Talk to someone. Get some help straight away. You know that's what I did, and then and, and, and end up healing me. But I, as before, the, the best antidepressant I've ever taken is the um, has been the black pill, because it's given me that comfort and reassurance that my lack of luck with ladies is not my fault. Um, but these ladies here are giving awful advice, particularly the the Tasha lady, where she said, oh. Um, if a woman says no, she really means yes. That is, I'm sorry. That that's that's terrible. That is horrible. That oh, I, that that's disgusting. I'm sorry. That is. Is it that bad? Okay, I'm asking. I'm not trying to be condescending. I'm asking because I don't think y'all have ever talked about it. Like, what's bad about it? Does it stick with you just for life? Do you think other people saw you? That would be my fear. I can just imagine like all eyes are on you when you approach a girl because I know guys turn to watch, especially if it's the pretty one. But what is it? Can someone break it down for that is fine. Well, it's simple. You've embarrassed yourself. It's humiliating. Yes, and obviously other people look at you and, and, and other women look at you and say, Oh, look at this creepy guy. Um, yeah, look at what he's doing. This creep, this this ugly, creepy guy is approaching all these women that he's got no chance with, and he's making a complete fool of himself. So of course, it's humiliation, embarrassment, and self-respect too. You know, one of the reasons I gave up on dating because I have, th I have, I have a thing called self-respect. I respect myself. You know, I, I, what, what, I said to myself, why, why am I going to subject myself to this humiliation, this embarrassment? Okay, no one wants me because I'm sub three. Okay, that's just life and my tough shit. I'm not angry at women because absolutely not. They're acting on their biology. Um, yeah, but see, problem with women is they, as I said before, they, they have no empathy because they dish out more rejection than being on the receiving end of it. They don't know what it's like. They just they can't they can't get their heads around it. They simply can't. And when when women on the rare occasions women do get rejected. They don't take it well. They don't. Oh, no way. You know, as I said before, if a woman had to walk into the shoes of an ugly man that no one wants, they wouldn't last five minutes. 
No way. They'd, they'd delete them, self-delete themselves. I guarantee they would do it. They would not have the mental fortitude to withstand what an ugly man has to put up with. And as I said, you know, as I said in the previous video and previously, um, I think a lot of Inkwell guys are probably the, ment the most mentally tough guys out there. I'm not saying physically tough in the sense that they're great fighters. No, no, no. They're, they're mentally tough. To be able to withstand that level of rejection and, and not take the easy, easy way out says a lot about them. It says a lot about them. I remember when I joined my first Inkwell forum back in, I think it was May 2008, I identified myself as um, probably the oldest guy there. I was 39, about to be 40. And one of the young guys replied to me and he said, Master Yoda, how come, you know, you haven't taken the easy way out? And I replied back to him and said, yeah, you know, I can understand you for making that comment. Uh, look, I had, I had my copes. I had my copes. I had my sports, my flight simulator game, my video games, and um, and more recently I have my music, my guitar playing, which I love. You know, I'm not very good, but tell you what, it's been, it's been a shitload of fun. And I've learned a lot of stuff too, a ton of stuff. So, yeah, if, um, yeah my copes. So. But the point I'm trying to make is I think uh, – physically unattractive inkwell men, I think we're probably the, mental, the most mentally tough guys out there. Absolutely. To be able to withstand that level of rejection and not take the easy, easier way, it says, says a lot about us guys. Anyway. Five seconds max, which brings me to the main point of this video, and it is how to respond after a woman rejects you. And it's so easy. And I'll tell you in one second, but first I have a quick request. If you're enjoying this video so far, please drop a like, subscribe, let me know. It makes me feel good, it helps my channel grow, and it helps my video reach to more guys who really need this information. Okay, when a woman rejects you, here's what you need to show her that you're not phased by it. Shake it off, right? You need to show her that it doesn't bother you. So for example, let's say you meet a woman at some social gathering, and you ask her out, and she says, no, what do you say now? Well, one option would be to say something very simple like, all right, no worries. It was fun chatting with you. Have a good day, right? Just plain and simple. Or you could also say something playful like, oh, that's a bummer. I bet we could have been Time Magazine's couple of the year, but you know, no worries with a smile. See how carefree these responses are. And again, do it in your own style, but it demonstrates that you're completely unfazed by her rejection. And you can prepare these before you even go out. You can write down. Uh, look, I do, I do number one. If a woman rejects me, I politely thank you for her time. Look, thank you for your time. Nice knowing you. All the best. And and leave. That's all you can do. As for the other thing, uh, I think it's a bit of cope, to be honest. Um, obviously, when you get rejected, it's not it's not pleasant, and it's going to really really fuck up your day or fuck up your night if you're meeting a woman at night. But um, look, all you can do is just uh, you know uh, just politely thank the woman for her time and just walk away. But that's just common sense. I mean, you need to pay a PUA scammer you know, huge amounts of money to tell you something you should already know. It's ridiculous. I mean, this, this stuff's just common sense. Four, oh, there's a squirrel attacking me. There are four different versions that you can write down and you can try out, but you also get to rehearse them at home and make sure that you're comfortable with them. Do it in front of the mirror, do it in a voice recording to make sure that you sound good and confident, but just so that you're armed and ready if this happens to you. I will give you another example, okay? This one's from one of my email subscribers that I love, who's named Jeffrey. He has been going to physical therapy for a while now, and he's had his eye on this gorgeous woman who worked there as a receptionist. She's beautiful, is how he describes her. Very feminine, well-dressed, perfect makeup, rock and body. And Jeffrey had been working up his courage to ask her out for a while now, until finally one day he did. With my encouragement, he asked her out for a coffee, to which she replied, well, I'm actually married. Without thinking twice, Jeffrey responded with, oh, okay, I guess he can come too, but I think that he might get jealous. Amazing, right? This cracked her up immediately and she started laughing. Even the other girls who worked at that place, which is good that other girls are watching, who overheard the conversation, they burst out laughing and the girl took his approach and asking out as a compliment and said, thank you. Jeffrey said, no worries. Where are the results, Marnie? I got kings in the audience. Keep going. I'll say my shit at the end. It's all good. Have a nice day or I'll see you next time before exiting the place with his head held up high, which I loved, and see how amazing that interaction was, Jeffrey perfectly communicated to that girl that her rejection didn't bother him one bit, and he did in front of other women. 
So those women have their brains going. When you show the girl who rejects you, I don't even want to say rejects, who turns you down, but you're not phased by it, you prove to her that you are emotionally strong and have high self-confidence. You also... Oh, I don't know about that. Um, with this guy she's talking about, I think his name was Jeffrey. Look, I mean, when you're interacting with them, and obviously the first thing you should do is look at her um, left hand and have a look at her, her wedding finger. And if you see an engagement ring or a wedding band on it, well, obviously... You, Common says it's common sense will tell you don't ask that woman out. <laughs> I mean, I, I, you know, you know, I'm, you know, I, I haven't approached a woman in uh, nearly twelve years, but in in situations where you know I was at a at a function and you know if I was talking to a lady or if I was at work and um, you know I'd look at her left hand and if I saw a, a wedding band or an engagement ring on on her on a wedding finger, you know I, I wouldn't even bother. I wouldn't even bother asking her out because I know she's married. Um, uh, look, when I've been rejected by women, like particularly face-to-face -face ones, um, I never got angry. I mean, yeah, look, it it, it, it ruins your day or ruins your night, but um, I never snap back at the woman. I just, yeah, but, yeah, thanks for your time. We'll see you later. That's all you can do, guys. It's... Um, but look, rejection is hard. It's tough, especially when you're an attractive guy. Um, it's every one, every rejection you cop, it's basically just hammering another nail into your coffin, or not, 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 not in that sense. It's hammering a nail into your dating life coffin, not, not your coffin. So I didn't, I didn't, I didn't mean to sound, didn't mean it to sound that way, but yeah, it does. It, um, uh, in the Black Pill Inc. community, we have a uh, expression or a meme that, that it's over. Well, unfortunately for some guys it is, I mean for me it is. I mean even if my mother told me that it was over that I shouldn't be wasting my time. I mean she said it in a nice way, but but she didn't actually use those words. Her words were, son, resign resign yourself to your fate as this is your destiny. She knows that I'm ink well. And she knows that I pay for playing. She's actually supportive of it. Um and she also um black pilled me in the sense she goes, son, you'll never you'll never you'll never uh, attract a hot looking Stacy. I said, I know that, Mum. I'm well aware of that. And she made a good point. She goes, look, even if you did fluke it and you're able to attract a really hot-looking woman, she's going to cheat on the old dump you because there's going to be 20 million other guys after her. And she's right. You know, even if you're able to to fluke it and marry or date a really hot-looking woman, I mean, how long is she going to stay with you until she dumps you for a chad? And, uh Yeah. So, so even my mother said it was over for me, but you know, she was nice about it. And you know what? I, what I, I didn't take offence to it. I did not take offence. I said, "Yeah, mum, you're right. It, it is over for me as far as women are concerned, and uh, I've got to pay for play." And she knows it. And you know, she's she's been really good about it. She's she's been supportive. She goes, "Oh, look, you know, you you're a bloke, and you're a man. A bloke's got to do what a bloke's got to do, what, what to do. You know, you got you're a man. You have a sex drive. You like women. Um, if you got to pay for play, go for it. Yeah, but um." Yeah, no, rejection is not fun. It's a very humbling experience. It's a very humbling, humiliating experience. But what I don't like is when people shame you and, and, and you know, like when I tell people that I've had a luck with women, either in person or particularly over the internet, the, the amount of shaming language and venom and, oh, it's just, it's just, it's appalling. It really is. An ugly guy cannot be blamed for something that's not his fault. You know, I was born with crappy genetics. Okay, that's just that's just life. You know, life's unfair. But don't blame these guys. Don't attack them and uh, you know say horrible things about them. You don't know you you don't know these guys. You've never met them, All right? So, but there's a man you're damned if you do, damned if you don't. Um, if you go out and try and meet women and get rejected by them, you get blamed. If you do what I do, you just give up. You get blamed and get called a loser. You can't win either way, guys. And you know, just I mean, like the old saying goes, the best winning the best winning strategy to play to win a to win at a game that's rigged against you is simply not to play that game. That's why I gave up on on dating because the the, the game was rigged against me. And all you know, it's rigged against guys like me. Well, it's rigged against a lot of uh, pretty much all of us unattractive guys. It's it is rigged against you. So why play that game? It's a bit like trying to run 100 meters with your ankles tied together. Or trying to win a boxing match with your hands tied behind your back. Forget about it. Huh?
that literally does did nothing for a sexual stream. Like, okay, what? Subconsciously single signal that you must be a man with many options in his dating life that there are other women waiting to hang out with you. All of this is you as a highly attractive and respectable man in the eyes of a woman. Even if she rejects you, she will see that you are high quality, which is great. In fact, at times, it can even spark so much attraction that the woman, I mean, if she's available, will actually come back and try to chase after you. And no, she won't. Once a woman rejects you, that's it. Game over. It's, she's not going to come back to you because you said some cheesy pickup line. Oh, God, this is just PUA cope and bullshit on a biblical level. Um, oh, it's, you know, PUAs give the most awful dating advice, particularly women. And once again, I'm not saying that to be a misogynist. I love and respect women. But let's be honest, guys. Female dating advice is about as much use as a car without wheels and an engine. It's bloody useless. Um, it's disingenuous. It's dishonest. Um, yeah, and it's yeah. What can I say, guys? It's bloody. It's bloody useless. And the advice that these two ladies have given in this video has been absolutely appalling. Moreover, when you show a woman that you're not affected by rejection, you also prove to your own mind that you can handle rejection easily. It subconsciously feeds your self-confidence, which spurs you on and makes you more comfortable with women. This is the secret. No, rejection doesn't make you more confident with women. It actually destroys your confidence. As we all know, confidence is the byproduct of success. How the fuck are you going to be confident when you keep failing? I mean, how does a how does a businessman be confident if all the business he starts end up going broke? You ain't going to be confident. You have to have success before the confidence. There's no other way around it. No, I'm sorry, it's not. Confidence without success to back it up is pure delusion, pure fucking delusion. I don't know how people just don't get it. I mean, confidence is probably the easiest word in the English language to define, particularly when it comes to attracting women. I don't know how people get it so wrong. <sighs> I don't know. The only way you're going to, as a man, the only way you're going to be confident with women is when if they find you attractive and, and have relationships, have sex with you. And what are women going to choose you on? Your looks. What what use is it to tell to tell an ugly man to be confident. It's it's bloody useless. Telling an ugly man to just have confidence to be attractive to women is like pouring syrup on shit and calling it pancakes. It's still fucking shit. You can't polish a turd. God, these women are talking some crap. Of the naturals and thank you for the super chat, you beer girl of OnlyFans one chat at a time. So sorry. Thank you, Ivan, for telling me. I've been made fun of in front of entire school. Okay, so you probably have like social phobia, social anxiety. Got you. Hold on. Before, the top guys get rejected a lot, but each one builds their confidence because of the way that they handle it. It becomes top guys. Yeah, they do get rejected sometimes. Look, even Chads and Giga Chads get rejected, but very few times. You know, if a, a Chad or a Giga Chad say he asks out 10 women, yeah, five might tell him to, to fuck off, but five will fuck him. So even if he gets a no, he knows a yes is just around the corner. But if he's a giga chad, he'll really get rejected. Rarely. So he could, well, no, <laughs> he could ask out 10 women and probably nine will say yes and one will, tell, one will tell him to fuck off. But even if he does cop the odd rejection, he knows a yes is just around the corner. Different story when you're an ugly guy. Different story. All you're copying is no, 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 no. Um, you don't know if that yes is going to come, if it comes. And in a lot of cases, it, will, it may never come. That's why I gave up on dating because I just I just wasn't getting any yeses. I mean, I know I did have that one uh, non-paid sexual experience with that hooker that took a life to me, but that's but that's it. Aside from that, I can't say any woman's shown any real real strong desire towards me. And if she did, I was skeptical of it because you know I I just have no confidence in myself. I have zero confidence. Um, yeah. easier and easier to approach women and before you know it they start dating the highest quality women and have hordes of women like coming after them obsessively the com no 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 the only guys who have lots of women coming after them are those top top 
five to ten percent guys in terms of looks. I'm sorry, that's that that's how that's how it works in the real world. Now look at the Tinder studies. Look at the OK Cupid study. And I, I know people will say, oh no, but online dating is not real life. Bullshit, it is real life. These industries are the, the online dating industry industries, which includes online date, uh, dating sites and Tinder, they are multi billion dollar industries. And the reason why they are multi billion dollar industries is because more and more men and women are turning to these online dating platforms to either hook up with people or to find long term partners. Although I'd say in the case of Tinder, it's more hook, more hooking, hooking up, but some dating does does occur on there. Um, yeah, so really, the, the, the only the, the only guys who are going to clean up with the women are those top five to ten percent guys in terms of looks, mostly looks, money, and status. But it's most, but in terms of genuine attraction, it's looks. Okay, you could have an ugly but rich guy. But he's famous. Yeah, he'll get a lot of women, but he'll just get a lot of gold diggers. That attraction is not gen- that, that attraction is not genuine. If you want raw, genuine attraction from a woman, you've got to be good looking. That's that's what women are generally attracted to. Confidence is coming from probably your job, and like the girls fall out of the sky when you're rich. So like, we'll keep going. They're that confident. I have one little exercise for you, or actually, I'm going to call it a challenge. I want you to go get rejected. Like have that as your goal. So if you can right now, and everybody can, go and interact five to 10 people a day, but this time with the objective of getting rejected. Set up your brain to accept and want rejection. Look for rejection. That's how your brain works. It's like a computer. You can program it, right? So when you are aiming for a rejection and you get it, you're gonna feel good about yourself. Oh, God. This advice just keeps getting worse and worse and worse. Getting rejected by women is about as much fun as having your head slammed in the door of a car. Oh, oh I don't know what to say. <laughs> no, that's just terrible advice. What you should be doing as a man is try and reduce the chances of you getting rejected by women. And one, one way of doing that is looks maxing. Um, just recently, I've come across a really good black pill channel. He's a he goes by the name of Ascended. He's a he's a gentleman from the United States, he, and I've got to give this guy credit. He's done an amazing uh, transformation on his looks. Before he used to be, he was not he wasn't ugly per se, but he was I suppose average to below average. Look, look, I'm not going to give an arbitrary rating. You know, I'm, I'm not I'm not with waffles. Um, but from one's point of view, he used to be, you know, average looking. He was overweight and he was losing his hair. This guy hit the gym, lost the weight. He got a hair transplant and he's gone from an average looking guy to a, a chat or a chat light. And now he's killing it with women. Absolutely killing it. And good luck to the guy. And I've actually left a few comments on his videos and he, you know, he replied back and he thanked me. And he's really nice. He's, from what I, um, I've never met, never met him in person, but from what I can tell, he's a really nice guy, a really nice bloke. And yeah, so he's um, he's looks maxed his way out of being an inkwell. And good luck to the guy. And any, any other guy that does that, I take my hat off to you. I already do. But for some guys, looks maxing won't work. They, you know, they're just that unattract. They they they're just that physically repulsive that no amount of self work will make them attractive to him. Like me, for example. You know, that's life of my tough shit. Um, so no, uh, this is terrible advice, Marty. You don't go out. <laughs> With the intent of being rejected, that's just stupid. That's all rejection is going to do. It's just going to destroy your confidence. It's just going to hammer another nail into your um, confidence coffin or dating life coffin, should I say. You wanted that and you got it. So that's my challenge to you. Go and get rejected today. I have tons of challenges like this in my program called How to Become a Man, Women. So she's telling she's telling guys to go out and, and, and fail. Who wants to, who wants to lose in life? I mean, I for thirty six years I played um, competitive soccer just just at an amateur level. I wasn't particularly good, and um, you, you go out there to win. You don't go out there to lose. And when you do lose, it fucking sucks. You know, I, I yeah, this lady just just giving ridiculous advice. You know, if you want to be successful at something, you do it with the intention to win, not to lose. If you're going out with the intention of being re- Rejected by women, how's that winning? 
it's just going to destroy you. Kind of, oh, God, I said, this, this advice is awful, and people, men are paying money for this dog shit. Want where I dive deeper into this topic of how to be a natural, or in other words, how to be naturally attractive to women. You, you can't teach that. She goes, oh, men who are naturals of women. And who are those naturals? Those top to five, ten percent of guys in terms of looks. If you're not starting the genetic next luxury, how the fuck are you going to be a natural with women? The only way an ugly guy is going to become, be that physical attractive is if he looks maxes his way out of it. And look, it will work for some guys. Like that gentleman I just described before, Ascended. It'll work for guys like that. Guys who, you know, they're not that ugly, but they need to do a bit of self-work. Yeah, those guys can looks max their way out of them. But if you're sub three, forget about it. No amount of self-work will make you attractive to women. And in that, in that, in that instance, you just got to pay for play. It's, just, it's, it's the only way around it. Look, it's, 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 it's unfortunate, but hey, life isn't fair. Using all the good stuff about you. I reveal a simple step-by-step -step system which can turn... Can't buy my love, Marty. She's gone. Okay, that, that concludes my reaction video to this, uh, what can I say, these these appalling PUAs, dating roaches, whatever they want to call themselves these days. Oh, how, how do you pay money for this dog shit? This is awful advice. Awful, awful advice. Particularly, I mean, probably the worst advice was when Tash said, oh, if a woman says no, she really means yes. Oh, my God. Do you know how much legal shit you could get yourself into doing something like that? As many of you are probably aware, many Western countries here in Australia, they've really ramped up the sexual harassment laws. And I mean, they've really bumped up. So you don't want to do something like that. If a woman says no, she means no. There's no ambiguity or grey area in that word. It is, it is a clear and definite meaning. And a woman doesn't have to verbalise her rejection. In most cases, she'll do it with her body language. And most normal people, including myself, are able to detect that, able to read that. As I've said many times before, and I don't mean to sound like a broken record player, most of my rejections were body language ones. It didn't even get to the stage for me to ask that woman out for a date. She already rejected me with her body language. You know, the, the usual shit, dirty looks, the silent treatment, back turns. Um, yeah, it's it's pretty straightforward, guys. This, this, this stuff is just common sense. Anyway, guys, thank you for listening to my video. No, I know it's been a bit long. I think it's just gone, just, just gone over 90 minutes. Um, if you'd like to leave your likes, comment, and subscribe. And I'll speak to you soon. You guys have a great day. Thank you, and bye for now.